And I want to start uh, by considering, first of all, reminding you what a solution reaction is. A solution reaction involves the combination of two solutions that contain ionic compounds uh, or electrolytes of some sort. So that could be, as we'll see later today, hard acid or uh, uh, strong acids, strong bases as well. Uh, so the rule is that a reaction occurs when ions are removed from solution. Remember, got to be removed from solution. This could be by the formation of a precipitate. It's one way this could happen, and that's where we're going to go today first to look at the formation of precipitates. Uh, and I'm going to just look at a typical one first. Okay. Okay. Now let's suppose uh, that in the laboratory uh, we made up two dilute solutions, one of which had silver nitrate in it and one of which had sodium chromate, Na2CrO4 sodium chromate. And uh, sodium chromate is kind of a yellow-orange color. And silver nitrate is colorless. If you mix these two things together, you see an immediate formation of a solid. And the solid is kind of brick red color, a little bit reddish-orange. And that is the characteristic color of silver chromate. Ag2CrO4. If you remember, chromate ion has two negative charges. Silver ion has one positive charge. So the formula is going to be Ag2CrO4. And uh, you can, you can um, notice the solid here. And that is indicated in the molecular equation for that with this S. Some textbooks use a C right here for crystalline, but most of them use S nowadays for solid. Okay, so we have two silver nitrates in aqueous solution plus silver, uh, sodium chromate in aqueous solution gives silver chromate solid, the orange, red-orange stuff here, plus sodium nitrate aqueous. So this is a precipitation reaction. This solid represents the precipitate that forms. And in the laboratory, you might at this point filter out that solid. If you were trying to isolate it for some reason, you're trying to make it, uh, you could filter it out. And uh, what we would like to know is a little bit more about why the solid forms, or at least how we can determine when a solid is going to form, and how we can describe the reaction over and above the use of the molecular equation here. OK. So the next step beyond the molecular equation is the total ionic equation. And I remind you that is arrived at by taking the um, compounds that form electrolytes and dissociating them. That means uh, ionic compounds, soluble ionic compounds. It also means strong acids and bases. So in this, uh, uh, for this reaction, silver nitrate is a strong electrolyte. It breaks up in solution to silver ions and nitrate ions. So in the total ionic equation, we write them out separately. Okay? And silver chromate is similarly dissociated in solution to two silver ions and chromate ions. So that is representative of what the reactants will form initially as far as ions in solution. Now, when the reaction occurs, the silver ions and the chromate ions are removed from solution. So this change is, um, uh, it, it is representative of a chemical reaction because ions are removed from solution. And uh, so we would view this equation as describing it. We would also note that sodium ions and nitrate ions will be left in this solution here. And if you filtered the red solid off and then evaporated the rest of that water, the rest of that solution, uh, if you carried this out in a stoichiometric ratio 
you should find crystals of sodium nitrate there. Okay. What really happens? What really goes on when we mix these two solutions together? Uh, the total ionic equation gets us started here. And if you notice in red here are the ions that actually react. Silver ions, chromate ions, and they form silver chromate, which is not shown as ions because it's a solid. Okay? <clears throat> Now, we uh, recognize here that the nitrate ions, the two nitrate ions and the two sodium ions on the left side of the equation are exactly the same as the two sodium ions and two nitrate ions that are on the right side. No change occurred. And uh, because of that, we call those ions that don't undergo any change spectator ions. They are not involved in the chemical change. They are merely spectators to the whole thing. Okay. All right, so we can go from the total ionic equation to the net ionic equation by getting rid of the spectator ions. And we simply, anything that's on the left side and the same amount as on the right side, we can uh, simply draw a line through them and eliminate them. So the nitrates go out, and the sodiums go out, and we are left, once they're gone, with the net ionic equation. Two silvers, aqueous, plus chromate ion aqueous, goes to Ag2CrO4 solid. That's what really happens. That's the net ionic equation. Does anybody have a question about those three kinds of equations? So we have represented the change by all three kinds of equations, and we have noted that ions are removed from solution, so that change is a, is a chemical change. Now the next question is, how are we going to know when a precipitate is expected to form? Well, of course, in the laboratory, you could just test it, right? See whether any solid form. You would have to prove what the solid is, but what we're going to do is we're going to use a set of rules called the solubility rules that will allow us to predict when precipitates are expected. And those are listed in table 4.1. I'm not going to go through them uh, in gruesome detail here. Um, some of them are pretty obvious, group 1A compounds contain lithium and sodium and so forth. They're all soluble compounds. Uh, nitrates and acetates and most perchlorides are also soluble. Then there are some other things like chlorides and bromides and iodides that are soluble for some things, but some uh, cations, but not for all cations. So um, you uh, can use these four rules to determine the soluble compounds. Now, some students try to take a shortcut here, and they don't learn the second set of rules, which are the insoluble ones. Uh, and the example, the reason that they give for that is that, well, if you know everything that's soluble, everything else must be insoluble. And to a certain extent, I am forced to agree with that. If you don't have time to learn all the rules, Certainly learn the first four, and if you're lucky, you might be able to deduce the ones that are um, uh, insoluble as being something else. But I recommend that you make a card for each one of these uh, and use it to help learn soluble and insoluble ionic compounds. Okay? So we're going to put these to use now uh, by looking at some reaction that we might not uh, otherwise know about. Uh, but you do need to memorize these rules. Okay, we're going to try to predict the formula of the precipitate and write the appropriate ionic uh, equations for precipitation and then later for acid-base reaction. Right now we'll do precipitation. Predict whether a reaction occurs when solutions below are mixed. And if so, show molecular, total ionic, net ionic equations and the spectator ions, if any. 
Well, the first one we've got is sodium sulfate and lead to nitrate. Sodium sulfate, if you know so sulfate ion has two negative charges and sodium has one positive charge, you know the formula is Na2SO4. Likewise, lead to nitrate is PbNO3 taken twice. Uh, now, a reaction, if it occurred, would cause the, um, the cations and anions to change partners. So that would mean that if a reaction occurs, uh, instead of sodium sulfate, we'll have sodium nitrate. Instead of lead nitrate, we'll have so, uh, lead sulfate. Okay? So the question is, are any ions removed from solution? The second one is ammonium perchlorate plus sodium bromide hypothetically goes to ammonium bromide and sodium perchlorate if any ions are removed from solution. So let's look at A. And what we're going to do is look at each pair of cations and anions. We start with sodium ion and sulfate ion and lead ion and nitrate ion. And now we're going to let them change partners to sodium cation nitrate anion and lead cation sulfate anion. Now, when you look at the uh, rules, you will see that sulfate compounds, ionic compounds that contain sulfate, may be soluble, may be insoluble, and the ones of lead 2 are insoluble. So let's assume that we already learned that rule, and we know that PbSO4 is insoluble, it's going to form a precipitate. No doubt about it, it will form a precipitate. Ions will get removed from solution, and therefore this will be an ionic reaction. So besides sodium sulfate and lead nitrate, the other possibilities are lead sulfate and sodium nitrate. All sodium salts are soluble. All nitrate salts are soluble. And so there's no doubt sodium nitrate is going to stay in solution. But lead sulfate is insoluble, so a precip precipitation reaction occurs. The molecular equation for that ladies, may I have your attention? There's a little too much chattering, chatting going on. Okay. I don't want to uh, be grouchy about such things, uh, but I know your neighbors don't appreciate your talking. If you're sitting there talking to the person on your right or the person on your left, it's likely that the people, uh, other people nearby, we should shut up. Okay? So think about that. Thank you. The molecular equation is arrived at by writing out the full formulas in aqueous solution. So sodium sulfate, lead to nitrate, aqueous, go to lead sulfate solid over here. Lead sulfate's insoluble, so that's a precipitate. And what's left is two sodium nitrates. That is the molecular equation. And it is a, um, a clean cut one in the sense that there's only one precipitate. Some of these things, don't let this throw you if, you if you get one, some will produce two precipitates. It's kind of rare, but uh, some will. That's what we look for here uh, in writing the molecular equation. We want to represent the insolubility of lead sulfate. We put that S there, and then we'll know. Now, the total ionic equation is arrived at simply by letting the things that undergo ionic dissociation undergo ionic dissociation. So lead, I'm sorry, sodium sulfate, Na2SO4 gives 2 Na plus and SO4 2 minus, aqueous. Lead 2 nitrate gives the lead 2 ion and two nitrate ions. Nothing has happened yet. This is the left side of the equation. These are the reactant and the reactant ions. The arrow says on the right side of the uh, equation, after the chemical reaction that we have decided is going to happen here happens, we'll get two nitrate ions, two uh, sodium ions, and sodium sulfate. Don't put charges on the sodium sulfate. Just write its formula that way and write an S in parentheses after them. And you can see without uh, any great difficulty that, again, the sodiums are spectator ions and the nitrates are spectator ions. 
And so it, uh, the net ionic equation will be lead 2 plus sulfate goes to lead sulfate. Lead 2, aqueous, sulfate ion, aqueous, lead sulfate solid. Questions on that one? Yes, go ahead. Uh, are not found in solids? Uh, no, that, I wouldn't say that. But the solid prevents them from getting into solution. So um, I think in order to avoid confusion, it's a good idea not to write them in a solid. Just write the formula. It'll be easier, simpler, and there won't be any uh, chance of confusion. Thank you for your question. Other questions here? All right, let's look at B. The possible product ion co uh, combinations from uh, the ammonium perchlorate and sodium bromide would be change partners, ammonium bromide and sodium perchlorate. Okay, uh, now if we write down, back up just a bit. Here is the ammonium ion. All ammonium ion compounds are soluble. Here is the perchlorate ion. Most perchlorates are soluble. Here's sodium. All sodium compounds, basically all of them, uh, ionic compounds, are soluble. And bromide ions, some of them are soluble. So if we look at this, uh, ammonium perchlorate is a soluble compound because of the ammonium ion. Sodium bromide is a soluble compound because of the sodium. And if we change partners here, ammonium bromide is a soluble compound because of the ammonium, and sodium perchlorate is soluble because of the sodium. So uh, there are no ions that are going to leave solution because all of them are soluble. So no reaction occurs because, you guessed it, everybody is a spectator ion in this case. 